In this video, I'm going to discuss common mistakes that people make generally when they're replicating workflows, but also specifically with respect to this project. So things that could help you as you're trying to troubleshoot any problems that you've discovered after you've run all your workflows. The second thing that I'm going to show you is how to reorder your workflows on the canvas so that the oldest year is on is at the top of the canvas and the newest year, the 15-16 year, is at the bottom of all of your workflows with all of the years intervening being uh, appropriately positioned. The final thing that I'll show you is the join multiple tool so that we can combine all of our individual workflows for each year into a single file and this will allow us to compute things like averages um, as well as make it easier for when we start to visualize this file in Tableau. Speaking first about the common mistakes, the first mistake that people generally tend to make when they are replicating workflows is they forget to update or reconfigure their input file. These can include things such as you keep the same year, but you're running a different yearly workflow. It could be that you forgot to select the state level data and instead selected the county level data. Or it could be that when you're in the outflow workflow, you actually selected the inflow worksheet um, and vice versa. So if you're having trouble later on where you have duplicate rows or you have something where you don't quite um, are, aren't quite matching up with an outflow and an inflow, you might be able to see those problems coming through directly from your original input file. The next common mistake that people make is they forget to update the number of rows that they skip. So they just go ahead and assume that the files retain their uh, positioning from year to year and that's not necessarily the case so always make sure that if you're skipping rows or you're keeping a certain number of observations that that still works as you transition from one uh, workflow to a replicated workflow. Next people tend to have a little bit of trouble with the formulas because they forget to rename them to the appropriate years. So you might have redirected your input files correctly but you're still seeing duplicate rows because your formulas continue to report a net number of exemptions or a net AGI for a different year than what you're working on. Finally, people tend to have a little bit of trouble uh, with the last select tool, um, making sure again here we had to uncheck the fields that were no longer available and check the ones that we were looking for. Hopefully by this point in the project you're starting to see what the benefit of Alteryx might be over Excel. We're still working with a limited number of workflow, number of uh, sheets here. However, what you might see is that it's probably faster to do one or two years within Excel. But the more that you need to repeat types of tasks or, you know, transforming data, Alteryx becomes the tool of choice because it's often faster to reconfigure a few tools within Alteryx than it is to keep repeating the same process in Excel. Additionally, Alteryx can handle large amounts of data that you might not be able to handle directly through Excel. Before I go on and we talk about how to join multiple fields and reorder the workflows, I'd like to caution you to not assume that missing values are missing for a year unless you have rechecked all of your configurations. I did say earlier on in the videos that there could be missing observations for years, but don't assume that that's the case until you have completely rechecked all of your configurations and that you didn't hit any of the common mistakes that we just talked about. All right, the next thing that I'm going to show you how to do is reorder the workflows on your canvas. So it might be that you chose a certain direction to work with it, but now you want to make it easier for somebody to externally look at what it is that you've done. And whoever is reviewing this says, okay, well, I'd like to see it with the oldest workflow first, uh, all the way ordered to the newest workflow. So as you can see, what you're canvas should look like is it should have the workflows for all of the years and if you did it in the order that we discussed you actually would have 15, 16 first and then 11, 12 and then whatever years you chose to do after that. So to order this oldest to newest the easiest thing to do is to first minimize all of your workflows. So remember we can minimize workflows by clicking on 
the blue button in the upper left hand corner or we also have the arrow in the upper right hand corner that allows us to minimize these. Once we have them minimized, it's easy to click and drag these anywhere we want them to be on the canvas. It can get a little challenging depending on your mouse speed, but if you get it correct, then you can go ahead and put that one last. And then as you get it last, you can then go ahead and drag up your 11-12 workflow as well. If it's not quite letting you drag it, clicking anywhere on the canvas may help you take care of that. It's also helpful to, after you've positioned the file to where you want it to go, to re-maximize that workflow so that you know when you're dragging your next workflow where it needs to go. So we can go ahead and just repeat the process of reordering our workflows. We'll only need to move four of these because the middle one is going to stay exactly where it was regardless of how you, well, in my case, the middle one is staying exactly where it is regardless of what you want to put first. So then we go ahead and we have that. And sometimes the inflow or the outflow will minimize within the minimization. That's okay. Again, you can just re-click on that to move it back up to where you need it to be. And as you can see, it's fairly easy to reconfigure how your workflows are reported on your canvas. Now that we have these in the correct years order that somebody would want to see, we now can take on the step of joining our individual years into one large file. To do this, we're going to use the scroll bar at the bottom of the canvas window and we're going to go ahead and move it over till we find some blank space on our canvas and we're going to move to the middle workflow for in this case it should now be the 13 14 combined inflow outflow we also need to go to the join menu and last time we used the join tool the join tool allows us to combine two worksheets into one but in this case, we want to combine five worksheets into one. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and use the join multiple. The join multiple allows us to input as many files into one as we'd like. A note, you don't necessarily have to reconfigure your workflow on your canvas in order to get the data to report in the right position. But what you should be aware of is that the join multiple tool will order the data within your final spreadsheet in whatever order you make your connections. So if you want the 11-12 year reported first, then the first connection that you have to make is from your 11-12 combined inflow outflow sheet into the join multiple tool. Then you would do the 12-13, then the 13-14, so that your data goes up in your order. So to make this connection, we're going to go back up till we find our 11-12 combined inflow outflow. We're going to click on the select anchor, the select output anchor. We're going to hold our mouse and we're going to drag that output anchor until we meet the input anchor for the join multiple tool. You'll notice, unlike the join tool, which had two input anchors because it allows you to combine two spreadsheets, there's only one anchor for the join multiple tool. But that anchor has three in arrows. What that essentially means is you can make multiple connections to the same input anchor. Now that we have done this, it tells us all inputs must be configured within one at least one field. We're going to do that in a minute. We're not going to worry too much about that, uh, that warning so far. The next thing that we want to do is we want to do the same process of connecting our 1213 input uh, combined inflow outflow file to our join multiple. So we click on our output anchor and we drag it to our input anchor. We repeat the process for 1314 and then we can scroll up to 1415 and then finally connect our 1516. What this ensures within our data set, as we see in our preview here, is that 11-12 came first and then every year thereafter is going to be combined in the order in which we made the connection. And we can see that by the connections having a specific number attached to them. 
Now that we have all of our connections made, we need to configure our tool. So we can go ahead and do so by connecting the input number one by state ID. And if you remember, we use state ID and then join tool as well because there is a unique state ID for every single state. Once we do so, Alteryx again looks to all of the other inputs that we've made and it sees that there is a state ID for each of those. So it goes ahead and autofills that and it gives us an additional field if we would like to match on multiple fields. Then we can go ahead and say, okay, now which, which uh, fields would we like to keep? Remember, these are our identifier rows. So the Hawaii ID, state ID, state abbreviation, and state are our identifier fields. We don't need to have those repeated throughout our file. So we can go ahead and uncheck those for all of the other inputs. And then we can also uncheck the unknown. And now what we should have is we should have a single file with all of the net calculated returns, exemptions, and AGIs for all five years. So we can go ahead and run. And what we see when we click on our output anchor from our join multiple is that we have our four identifier fields. And then we have, as we scroll over in order, all of our net returns, exemptions, and AGIs for each of the five years for all of our observations.